Hello everyone, let's have a story time. If you want to understand better why this is here, you can watch that video. Anyways, for mechanical engineers there are some scenarios where we use these kind of acids like muriatic, nitric and things like that. But to better understand the context of all of this, we need to go back in time when I was in college. One of our teachers told us something about a company that wanted some students to research some materials. Most of us had no interest whatsoever because we were studying mainly for manufacturing process and things like that. However, as a student there is a point in time where you want money, and a good amount of it, because you want to buy stuff, keep the party time, projects and a lot of things. So it picked up my interest, because the teacher said something about a good amount of money. And even after saying that, nobody wanted to give it a try because it was related to metallurgy, material engineering and things like that. I had some of those signatures, but I had forgotten most of the things. And I also wanted to specialize in design and manufacture. However, even if I understood nothing about this topic, after I saw the amount of money they were offering, they got me right away. This company wanted some students to do some research, using steels from a certain country that produces a lot of things but their quality is something like a meme. That is where Young Me comes into play. To make this part of the story short, this company had a lot of issues while welding that steel, so they wanted me to check why. And in order to do that I had to get some samples, grind the heck out of the steel, polish and then use chlorhydric and nitric acid to reveal the grain size of the steel. After all that process, you can get a picture like this, where it is possible to detect issues with the steel and stuff like that. Don't worry if you don't understand what's going on. When I started, I also had no freaking idea what in the actual heaven I needed to find or what I was looking for. Back when I was experimenting with this, I used the college lab to prepare all the samples. Basically, I had the lab for myself because it was summer, and all the process was going smoothly, aside from all the learning to properly understand the issue with the steel. The lab's headmaster was a piece of douchebag, someone who was busy most of the time, and one day where I was supposed to have around 2 hours to use these acids, he told me something like You have like 30 minutes because I have another place to go and I don't trust you people like you Freaking piece of garbage The problem with this was that I had 12 samples if I remember well And once I realized that my time was tight as fuck I had to rush through all the process So Never neglect your gloves Because while making my acid beverages I felt a bit of wet in my hand. And that's when the funny part starts. Because I start screaming in my mind at the top of my lungs while cursing. So the situation was something like Fuck! 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 Oh! I finished pouring the acid, looked at my hand and it turned freaking yellow. So, imagine like a reptile skin texture with a yellow color. Now, how does it feel to have some acid in your hand? Imagine that you move your hand closer and closer to fire, but you are not able to move the fire. It is not an insane hurt, but it hurts nonetheless. That injury lasted for around 3-4 months more or less, Here's a picture of how my forearm looked at the time, and once a piece of my skin fell off. It is a shame I don't have a picture to show how my hands looked, but it was a bit nasty. The conclusion of all of this is, use your freaking gloves while handling acids. Other than that, after those 3-4 months there is only a small white point that works as a reminder of what can happen if you messed up. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time.